Namaskar. Om Namah Shivaya. Happy Father's Day. We all hope and pray that we will have power for this entire duration uh, because there were some challenges uh, at where Sri Ramesh is staying. Let's hope and pray that Lord Shiva will allow us to let this program go through its complete uh, session. And, and today's guest today is uh, Sri T.R. Ramesh. He needs no introduction. He is the president of Temple Worshipper Society. He is also the president of Indic Collective. And he is a scholar in Tamil classics such as Periya Puranam and Devaram. And uh, more importantly, why are we taking up this one subject? Why Chidambaram Temple? Why Nataraja? What is the significance of this? And more importantly, why does the DMK government, you know, spend sleepless nights trying to somehow usurp this temple? And they have left no stone unturned. This was expected. Unfortunately, whatever we are trying to do, these people are determined to try and somehow disrupt the existing order. To understand all these things, first we need to understand the importance and significance of this temple. Um, let's first welcome Sri T.R. Ramesh. Namaskaram, sir. How are you? I'm good. Sh uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. And uh, we, we just want to first start out with uh, a quick introduction about the importance of this temple. Uh, Ramesh ji, you can start and then whenever you are ready for the slideshow, viewers, we have an impressive slideshow, I think. And, and please stay till the end because it's a very, very uh, significant one. A uh, lot of hours have been spent trying to put this thing together. Over to you, Ramesh ji. Uh, thank you, Sri Ayer. Um, delighted to be with the uh, Pre Guru's uh, channel. And uh, Namaskaram to everyone. Uh, Chidambaram temple, as you know, is the temple for Saivites, that is the Shivabhaktas, across the world. Especially for Tamil Saivites, the word koil or temple would mean a standalone word, koil, that is temple, would mean only Chidambaram temple. Um, it has been sung by all the Saivite saints. Saivites believe that Chidambaram is the center of earth from where the cosmic energy flows. Chidambaram's antiquity is lost in history. We don't know when this te temple came up and how when the worship started. But we know one thing. Along with the temple history which is available now, the history of Podhudi Chidas is also intertwined. There is no Chidambaram temple without the Podhiti Chidas. And Podhiti Chidas cannot be spoken as a separate entity without Chidambaram temple. Now, this is a temple that is managed by a denomination, a separate religious denomination, a subsect of Hindus, a micro community among Hindus who reside only in Chidambaram. And this is an icon for Hinduism. Now, if you want to represent Hinduism with one picture, in my opinion, there are only two, two symbols. One is the uh, Om, the, the picture of Om, which I'm not sure everyone will link it to Hinduism, but the moment you show the picture of Nataraja, the dancing lord. Everyone know it relates to Hinduism, it relates to India. So I would say this is a not only a symbolic representation of Hinduism, it is Hinduism. The Chidambaram temple represents everything that is Hinduism. It represents the Vedas, it represents the most ancient living languages. It represents the worship of form, semi-form, and the formless. Over to you, sir. Um, thank you very much for that uh, very beautiful introduction, uh, Ramesh ji. Um, the, the temple's origins, we don't know, but we do know that the whole thing is a single caste. There are no this whole thing was done as a single piece and it's an alloy. Uh, I, I'm sure you can dwell upon it a little bit, uh, Ramesh ji. What's beautiful thing about this is how did they conjure this so long ago? 
that you know they they knew that this this uh, nataraja dancing nataraja was done as a single cast bronze I, we don't know what what would have gone into it how did they come up with all the different metals we have no idea i think somebody has done research and they've analyzed it today but it, it's it's something like a variation on bronze uh, let's get to our presentation ramesh ji whenever you are ready sir we can start with that yeah we can go straight to the presentation now uh, during the presentation i'll be happy to uh, share the uh, legal aspects that concern this temple and uh, why by hook and mostly by crook the present government is trying to take over this temple and yeah, and viewers so, uh, do do feel free to ask questions uh, shri ramesh will be happy to answer your questions and also do like this video because we would like this to reach far and wide over to you ramesh ji thank you sir chidambaram temple or the other name for the temple is sri sabanayagar temple saba means the dancing hall in chidambaram in tamil it is known as podu the dancing hall is known as podu and it is mentioned in the tirumurais the dancing hall is uh, also known as chitrambalam the small ambala the small dancing hall the temple itself is known as koil in tamil which means the temple not just temple but the temple and the temple of sri nataraja is one of the five dancing halls of nataraja the first one is at tiruvalangad the ratna sabha the second one is at chidambaram temple the kanaka sabha the third one is in madurai the silver sabha and the fourth one is at tirunelveli the copper sabha and the fifth is no metal but only a picture the picture uh, picture of sabha is in kutala that is uh, some distance from tirunelveli and almost the border of kerala of the five sabhas chidambaram is the second it represents space among the five panchabhutas you you know that air water earth fire and space of all the five elements space is an individual element which can subsist without the other elements to have fire you need some material to on which the fire can be there and for the water to run you need earth and earth to be there you need space and even for air you need space but space can exist individually and it will also contain all the other four elements so that way chidambaram temple is a is a very very uh, unique temple it's specially spa- uh, placed and the space is worshiped here as chidambaram ragasya uh, we'll move to the next slide um ramesh ji this was something that i inserted uh, sorry for that so this is shiva's cos this is shiva's cosmic dance there is an institute called cern in switzerland and on june 18 2004 the indian government uh, donated this uh, uh, shiva nataraja uh, symbolizing the cosmic dance of creation and destruction and and this to me is one of those iconic things uh, you can see at night how the projection of uh, lord nataraja shows up against the backdrop of a building and the left side is the uh, picture during daytime and and the important thing is that many scientists also accept that shiva represents the cosmos next slide sir ah chidambaram temple as a the saivites have a unique belief that in every shiva temple there is a shiva jyoti in the shivaling the shiva jyoti of the shivaling after the last puja of the day or the night the shiva jyoti comes to chidambaram and mingles with the icon or the deity of nataraja in chidambaram it gets itself recharged there all shiva temples the shiva jyoti of the shivaling comes to chidambaram at night and leaves in the morning to the respective temples except one temple which is tiruvayyar where the shiva jyoti does not leave the temple because shiva himself came as an archaka and did puja to the shivaling there so one temple the exception proves the rule where every other shiva jyoti comes to chidambaram that way chidambaram is 
extremely important to Sai Bites. And the last puja of Chidambaram um, in the night, it is done at 10 o'clock when all other temples would have been closed. Let's move to the next slide. As I said earlier, the, the origin, the antiquity of Chidambaram temple is unknown. When the uh, temple came to be or when the worship came to be in the place because it is associated with the Patanchali and Vyakarabada, the saints and uh, uh, Upamanyu, who is the Bhiksha Guru of Lord Krishna. So the, the time we cannot fix of how many centuries ago this temple came to existence and all that. But what we know is from the time Chidambaram temple is there, the Podhudikshadas are also there. The unique community who said to her, come from Kailas to Chidambaram. There were 3,000 people who came down with the Nataraja icon to be established in the Chidambaram. And when they came, they found there were only 2,999. Then the Lord himself announced that I am the 3,000 among the Chidambaram Brahmins. So the Chidambaram Dikshidas consider Nataraja as one of them. And their loyalty to the temple and to Nataraja has been unflinching over centuries. The Madras government itself said Sri Sabana Temple of Sri Nataraja in Chidambaram is an ancient temple of great importance to Saivites all over India. Actually, it's all over the world because people come from Malaysia, Fiji, Australia, South Africa. Every Saivite would deem it his duty to come and have darshan at Chidambaram. We have a huge uh, number of devotees in Sri Lanka who are devotees of Chidambaran temple. Next slide, sir. As I said earlier, this temple is extremely old. It is mentioned in the Tirumantaram, which is uh, Tamil Saivite work, which is at least 2000 years old. This and the Tirukkadavur temple, in my opinion, are the only two temples mentioned in the ancient text of Tirumantira. Next slide. The uh, central portion of the temple, that is the Kanaga Sabha, it is the most ancient part of it. It is, uh, as I said, it was known as Chitrambalam, the small dancing hall of uh, Adraja. Then the temple grew in size, particularly during Chola reign. The later Cholas developed the temple to its current size, which is a little more than 39 acres, almost 40 acres in size. Next slide, please. It's changed. Uh, can, can we move to the next slide? Now, the Chidamaran temple has four massive towers, all built at different periods. The temple also suffered during um, invasions by non-Hindus, particularly the, um, during the Mughal period and all that. And subsequently, many parts were rebuilt by the Vijayanagara kings. But the four Gopurams came at different time, but they are of the same size and prominence. This has been possible only because the others continue to be the administrators for over 20 centuries. And they have maintained the antiquity, the heritage aspects of this temple like nobody can. Next slide, please. The central uh, portion of the temple, the Kanaka Sabha, it is so called Kanaka Sabha because it is the golden hall of Nataraja. It's a wooden structure in rectangular shape covered by a thatched roof which is covered with gold leaves because of this gold leaf value and other this temple was a target of plunder by invaders and the podhudikshadas secured the wealth of the temple hid them lost their lives 
there were 3000 in number now there are only about uh, 430 in 1951 there were only 250 but at the cost of their lives they have saved the uh, kanaka sabha and they have saved the uh, nataraja icon hiding it in different places including kerala and in Thiruvarur, they kept the temp, uh, Nadraja icon for more than 40 years and they brought it back to Chidambaram. The next slide, please. Yeah, you, next one is there, sir. Sakala Thirumani, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not able to see it. Uh, so, um, the uniqueness of Chidambaram, Kanaka Sabha, is. The three forms of Lord Shiva are worshipped here. One is the Sakala Tirmeni or the iconic uh, figure of uh, Nataraja, which is so mesmerizing, so captivating, uh, which comes out of the temple twice a year and is carried in the chariot. Then we have the Shivaling, Chandra Molishwar, for which pujas are done six times a day with uh, amazing punctuality and uh, pomp and splendor. And we have the Chinambaram Ragasyam, which is space, but represented by the uh, golden bilva leaves. So we have the form, the semi-form, which is the shivaling, and the formless space, which is the Chinambaram Ragasyam. So these three are worshipped in the Kanaka Sabha every day as per Veda, Vedic traditions. Next slide, please. So if you see the Nataraja image, the matted hair, usually the hair will fall down. It will not, you know, keep aside like this. But as Kanchi Mahapariva said, the, the form, the Nataraja uh, posture is like a snapshot of the Lord dancing. So when you're dancing and you're twirling around and all that, the hair goes on both sides and that picture is captured. The left foot is raised foot. It is called Kunchita Padam. And it is there the souls are given salvation or mukti. Shiva holds in his hand the tamarakam, which, from which the words came, the sound came, and the creation came. He also holds the fire. He represents the fire, five elements. So every part of Nadraja is really expressive of the finest things in the cosmos, the secrets of the cosmos. Next slide, please. The Chidambaram temple, which developed during the Cholas and during the Vijayanagara temple, it's got uh, many sub shrines and it's got wonderful miniature um, reliefs of uh, dancing postures. It's a great temple archaeologically, sculpturally, and it is spread across the 40 acres with a great pond called Shivaganga on, the, on its northern side, four impressive towers, an amazing temple, a must-see temple for any Hindu. So the Saivite belief is the Nataraja posture, the dancing Lord represents the five activities of the Lord called Panchakritya, Srishti, which is creation, Stiti, which is preservation and continued maintenance, Samhara, which is destruction, actually it is not actually destruction, but it is putting the souls to sleep, putting the world to an end so that it is recreated. Samhara in, uh, in Sanskrit would mean doing it in a fine manner. So every end has to be a complete one and that's what the Lord does. And Thirobhava, that is the most important thing. So when samhara happens, when the soul is put to rest, it should not have the memory of the previous birth because it can lead it to more cycles of birth. So the Lord 
does the veiling of the memory. He creates a new world for you. He creates, a, gives you a new birth in which you are given a fresh chance. So the Sthirobhava is a very important thing. And Anugraha is the ultimate release from the worldly bonds and giving Mukti. So Nataraja does this uh, five things known as Panchakritya. And there are many Tamil songs which uh, expounds on this. The one particular song which says Totram Thudi Adanil. Thudi is the uh, Tamaruga in the hand of the uh, Nataraja from the small drum, the handheld drum, which makes the uh, sound and from the sound the world is created. So Srishti, Stiti, Samhara, Thirobhava and the ultimate Anugraha, which is the Mukti. Next slide, please. Now we come to the uh, micro community of Pudu Dikshadas. They are called, they are Dikshadas who are given Diksha by Shiva himself when they, when they are yet to be born. There is a ritual in uh, the Chidambaran temple when every pregnant Dikshada lady, she will come to the temple at an appropriate time during a pregnancy and seek the Lord's blessings. And every male child she is carrying is given Diksha. It is the belief that she is, he is given Diksha by Nataraja himself. And they are born Dikshadas. Elsewhere, the Vedic Brahmins have to attain Diksha and to be called Dikshadas. Here in Chidambaram, they are born Dikshadas. And this micro community is found nowhere else. One great thing about this community is you can go to any part of the world and you can look at any ancient community or ancient tribe in the Amazons or in the Andamans or in Africa, any ancient tribe who is doing the same thing over 20 centuries. But you will not be able to say that this community or this tribe has been in one place doing the same thing. Maybe there are a handful of tribes which are which is doing the same thing over 20 centuries. I'm not saying it's impossible to find such tribes, but you can never pinpoint them to one location. Whereas the Chidambaram Dikshadas are such a unique community. They've been in one town, which is Chidambaram, for more than 20 centuries, doing the same social, cultural, and religious things that they've been doing for the past 20 centuries. And they are Vedic scholars. They abide the Vedic tradition. So Vedic tradition has already been declared, the oral tradition of Vedas has already been declared by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. And the finest examples of intangible cultural heritage are the Podhi Dikshadas, a community which needs to be preserved with care by governments, whether it's the state government or the central government, they should preserve such communities with great care. Unfortunately, the state government thinks something else. But there is no denying that the Podhi Dikshadas are a clan or a community which has been there for more than 20 centuries. I don't think any other community can claim this distinction in India. And the temple is the property of the community of Podhi Dikshadas. This has been recorded in the South Arkat manual by, uh, made by the then collector of South Arkat, the district magistrate of South Arkat, Mr. Gaston. And this has been recorded in the Caston tribes of India by Mr. Francis. The Podhidikshadas as a group, they are called the Sabha, it's a committee of Dikshadas. They meet every 20 days and they discuss the matters of administration of the temple. The Dikshadas are both administrators and the pujaris of the temple. Next slide, please. The next slide, uh, the Honorable Supreme Court of, uh, sorry, Honorable Madras High Court, as early as 1888, has said the Podhidichadas duty of puja and administration is inseparable. 
a dishadar cannot say i will do only puja or a dishadar cannot say i will do only management they have both duties and both rights this cannot be taken away from them the puja system is unique it follows the vedic tradition the dikshadars have internal rules for many centuries which have been very very clearly laid down how the pujas will be conducted how the dikshadars will take turn in doing pujas take turn in administering the temple take turns in looking after the temple everything is laid down and also the detailed manner in which the rituals will take place the festivals will take place what uh, jewels will be adorned to the deity and the way they protect the jewels is amazing they have 20 key holders of the jewel box in the temple which in my opinion has the most antique jewels anywhere in south india the podudikshadars are known as tillaiwal antanar or the tillai muai river the brahmins 3000 brahmins of tillai and they are hailed as the first among saivites by all worshipping tamil saivites if you heard some tamils claiming to be shiva bhaktas attacking the podudikshadars please understand they are not true shiva bhaktas because it is ordained for every tamil saivite to hold chidambaram dikshadars as the first among saivites and it has been ordained by lord tyagaraja of tiruvaru so if you believe to be a saivite you know of the 63 saints and the nine gr- groups of saints that is the total of 72 saints the first place is given to chidambaram dikshadars the chidambaram dikshadars are found only in chidambaram they marry among themselves only they are a closed community and everything concerning them revolves around the temple their training their their vocation their, their education the practices the skills they le- learn everything is revolved revolving around the chidambaram temple the puja rituals are very unique they follow the vedic principles in caste and tribes it has been recorded the pujas represent a domestic puja that takes place in a house and not like a temple puja the person who recorded a white man and english man he could not differentiate between a agamic puja and a vedic puja so he wrote like this the pujas looked like a domestic puja this is how the rishis did their pujas millions of year, mi- millennium of years ago thousands of years ago and the same puja is followed in chidambaram the pujas as ordained by patanjali and sage vyagrapada are followed today till date so that way also the chidambaram is a great denominational temple the puja is done to nataraja the puja is done to the shivaling and the puja is also carried out to the ragasya the formless space and in the evening there is a special puja for the ragasya in which only the priest of the day and his assistant will take part that puja cannot be witnessed by the hindu public which is coming to the temple or even by other dikshadars so it is called a rakasya puja the rakasyam is the chidambaram rakasyam which is space the unexplainable that is why it's called rakasyam dikshadars are basically tamils if anyone says i am a tamil he cannot show proof of his uh, belonging to tamil nadu for more than 4 or 5 centuries whereas the dikshadars can show their proof for more than 20 centuries they speak tamil at home the mother tongue is tamil and many of them have erudition in tamil and tamil saivite thermorais next slide please the saint umabadi shivam a tillaiwal and that is a dikshadar of extraordinary merit 
He has authored many Sanskrit works and he has also authored Saiva Siddhanta works in Tamil. He is considered as one of the four gurus of Saiva Siddhanta, that is Tamil Saivism. Next slide, please. There are many Dichadas have authored works concerning Tamil Tirumurais and Saiva tradition. We have scholars in every generation of uh, Podhidikshadas and their knowledge of Thirumurai is extraordinary. They give great importance to Tevaram and Tiruvasakam. However, the media portrays them as if they are against Tamil tradition, they are against Tamil language and they are against Tevaram and Tiruvasakam, which is a complete fabrication of truth. Next slide, please. It is only in Chidambaram of the 12 Saivai Thirumurais the first seven were discovered only in Chidambaram. Chidambaram gave the seven Thirumurais to the entire world. It also gave the eighth Thirumurai, Thiruvachakam and Thirukkovayar, which was written by Lord Naraja himself as dictated by Saint Manika Vashagar in the environs of Chidambaram temple. And it was discovered at the feet of Lord Naraja and the Dikshadas gave it to the entire world. And the 9th Thirumurai, 10th Thirumurai, 11th Thirumurai are all connected with Chidambaram temple. The 12th Thirumurai from song 1 to the end, more than 4,000 songs were sung in, Thirum, uh, in Chidambaram. The Arangetram or the work was taken up for the first time for the entire world in Chidambaram only. So all the 12 Thirumurais have connection with the Chidambaram temple. And uh, Dikshadas are proud of this and they celebrate the Thirumarais and Tamil, which is portrayed in an entirely opposite manner by the uh, missionary media and the Tamil Nadu government. The temple has been in the administration of Podhu Dikshadas for many centuries. And they have always taken care of the temple and they are maintaining the temple. The Madras High Court has recognized this as early as 1888. They have said the administration and the puja are inseparable. Again, in 1951, the Podhidhi were recognized as a separate religious denomination. And it was declared that the temple belongs to the denomination. Next slide, please. The Madras government went on appeal against the judgment in 1951. And they lost the appeal, which was dismissed by a constitutional bench of this Honorable Supreme Court. That is five judges of the Honorable Supreme Court dismissed the appeal of the Madras government. The appeal said the Dikshadas are not a denomination. The appeal said that the temple does not belong to Dikshadas. The appeal said the temple can be administered by government. All these contentions were dismissed by, by five judges of the Honorable Supreme Court of India, a constitutional bench, in 1954. Next slide, please. Uh, we can move to the next one. The Vichadas administer the temple with the internal rules known as the Sabanaihar Koil Satta, that is the Sabanaihar Temple rules. The Honorable Division Bench has appreciated the manner in which the rules have been laid down and printed as early as 1849. The Dikshas are unflinching in following the rules. They don't dilute the rules or they don't make changes. Next slide. The loyalty of Dichadas to the temple, the continued devotion to Nadraja has been recorded in the judgments and many dignitaries who visit the temple have also recorded it in the visitor's book. And these people include Supreme Court judges, state ministers, etc. 
the podu dikshadas have protected the chidambaram temple over centuries giving it the utmost priority and they defend the temple at any cost including their lives if today we are able to see nadraja who was worshiped for centuries by our ancestors and the pujas continue in the same form and manner and tradition we have to thank the pudu dikshadas for it in 1951 the madras high court declared them to be a separate denomination the appeal as i said earlier was dismissed both on merits and on constitutional grounds the court found there was absolutely no merit in the government case to take over the temple and also that the constitution prohibits it article 26 leaves the administration of a temple only with the denomination and on that ground also the supreme court dismissed the petition and subsequently the appeals the judgment has now become final but the tamil nadu government wanted to reopen it again and they did it clandestinely next slide please in 2009 a single judge ordered that the government can appoint an executive officer to the chidambaram temple the judge also said the denominational status has to be relooked the dikshadas filed an appeal in 2009 that was also dismissed by a bench of the madras high court the dikshadas filed a special leave petition before supreme court and the judgment came in 2014 the judgment said the madras high court made a huge error in re looking at the denominational status of the pudu dikshadas which had attained finality it set aside the judgments of the single judge and the division bench and it restored the administration of the temple back to the pudu dikshadas article 26 has been formulated by the authors of the Con- indian constitution mainly to protect such micro communities the small sects from the onslaught of those having power in numbers or from the onslaught of the majority if minority religious uh, institutions are given protection their charities are given protection by the government micro communities should be given extra protection that is why we have articles 25 and 26 in the constitution not only that we also have article 291 which is to uphold the culture of certain sections of indians next slide chidambaram temple over 20 centuries have seen many invasions many takeover bits by kings who are greedy or egoistic etc but dikshadas survived all that and they protected the temple and they protected the naraja icon they protected the jewels etc it is ironical that a democratic government now wants to take over the temple in a clandestine manner which even the moguls and tipu, tipu sultans etc etc failed to do so next slide podu dikshadas they are also the among the first to open the temple to all castes of india indians uh, hindus any hindu could come, come and have darshan in chidambaram temple and they were among the first to open the temple not only that if you, if you want to have come and have darshan of nadraja you need not even be a hindu that's what the podu dikshita say if they know somebody to be a nadraja bhakt they allow people of other religions also and i have seen people belonging to different religions other than hindus come and have darshan at chidambaram it is really ironical that the chidambaram podu dikshadas who have survived as a clan as a micro community from the onslaughts of moguls the french invaders tipu sultan etc etc are now have to fight 
a democratically elected government which is trying its best to somehow pulverize this micro community because they are brahmins because they are a symbol of hinduism and because perhaps the missionaries wanted that way the present government is trying to rekindle the question of the denominational status of the temple they are disobeying the orders of the supreme court and they are trying to enforce inspection uncalled for inspection and uncalled for interferences in the temple administration which is in contempt of the supreme court judgment it is really unfortunate these shudras are again made to defend their temples but as before lord naraja will protect them and will sustain the community and will save the temple thank you very much thank you very much sir um i i i i can't uh, say in words how grateful i am uh, on behalf of the viewers that you took time to go through this presentation and and share with us your thoughts about this great temple i should thank you for the opportunity because this is the temple and we have to tell our viewers why saving this temple and its tradition is most important uh i i have one unasked piece of advice for many of my friends who watch it from world over you can take a week and go from temple to temple starting with i think tanjavur and ending in tiruchirappalli it's a small area of about 100 kilometers or even less than that but there are so many iconic temples there you can spend a day in each temple taking in the breathtaking sights and the architecture that has gone and in middle of this is chidambaram and 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 this is just a great trip the roads are great the the facilities to stay are great it's a very developed area unfortunately this is also today the most uh, you know uh, converted attempted area both christian missionaries as well as muslims are very active in fact pfi is very strong in this tanjavur district nia has been acting to try and control this stuff unfortunately what is happening is that the place which is supposed to be the cradle of sanatana dharma is under the attack not from outside but from within this is what is the sad part of what is going on um one question uh, ramesh ji i am told that this temple just to make sure that there is no way the government can come and audit does not have hundi in any of the uh, places where the uh, you know whichever um, uh, god you go in front of there are no hundis and if you want to donate they give you a receipt just like you know um uh, like you know you are depositing money in a bank so in terms of financial misappropriation they have more or less eliminated any scope then why does the government want to still poke its nose into it see chidambaram temple does not have hundis the dishdas do not have any immobile properties to manage for the temple there are many uh, acres and acres thousands of acres of land dedicated for the temple but dishdas don't control it or own it they are in the hands of the government which is not collecting the due income from these properties this collecting in a miserable manner this truth is well hidden so no hundis no properties no shops inside the temple if you go to madurai temple you will find so many shops selling unwanted things inside a temple from balloons to cell phones you know and the shops are run by non hindus in many of these temples in chidambaram temple you will not find a single shop in chidambaram temple you will not find a single hundi you will, in chidambaram temple does not hold immobile property but six pujas happen in a christian manner in a wonderful manner in a traditional manner with great pomp and splendor in chidambaram temple with unfailing punctuality so this is a bad example bad example within courts for the temples run by the tamil nadu government under the hr and c department for example tiruchendur temple has got 3500 acres of land you ask hr and c of the tamil nadu government how much are you collecting from the 3500 acres of land they will give you a evasive answer 
Vedaranyam temple has got 33,000 acres of land. You find out the average income collected there, it will be less than 200, 300 rupees an acre. The HRNC officials should be sent to jail for their miserable criminal dereliction of duty in Vedaranyam temple. But Chidambaram temple, without properties, without hundis, without shops, the pujas are happening in a beautiful manner. Six Abhishehams are happening in a, a, every year, of which two are celebrated with festivals of more than 10 days each. So Chidambaram temple, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a government run temple, has stark differences, which is pricking the um, non-existing conscience of the HRNC officials. That's why they are eager to take over the temple, make it commercial, make it uh, just like one of the temples they are running. And this is the reason they want to take over this temple. Also, this temple is run by uh, Brahmins. We know the anti-Brahmin stand of the uh, DMK government. So that is one more reason for them to take over the temple. For To do that, they say these uh, Chidambaram Dikshadas are against uh, uh, Tamils, they are against the Tamil language, they are not the original Dikshadas, they come with all sorts of lies. They want to take over this temple because this is the only major temple which is not in the hands of the government. Of course, we know for a fact that in many major temples like the Tiruvannamalai temple or the Srirangam temple or the Madurai temple or the Rameshwaram temple, the Tamil Nadu government executive office is there only by fraud. They are there without any orders of appointment of executive officers. A major fraud is happening in Tamil Nadu where the government is in, present in major temples for more than 50 years without any appointment orders. But they are not correcting these uh, fraudulent activities, but they want to go and inspect Chidamaran temple, which has meager income, no hundis, no properties, no shops. That's really sad. People need to know, Hindus need to know the truth. Um, I have one uh, curiosity question, uh, Ramesh ji. Uh, uh, Shiva Bhakta told me once that, you know, the dancing Shiva, when he was performing the cosmic dance and the sound that was coming from the Damru, from one side came sounds that ended up being Sanskrit and from the other side came sounds that ended up being Tamil. Uh, is it true or is this something that uh, is still just a belief? It is one of the beliefs of uh, Hindus. So, uh, belief, if you ask for proof, it's a little rather difficult. But we have to know that for the uh, Hindus in Tamil Nadu, both Sanskrit and Tamil is of equal reverence. You cannot today speak Tamil without Sanskrit words. In fact, the uh, election symbol of DMK, they call it Udaya Suryan. Both words are Sanskrit. They don't say Yeru Nyayari in Tamil. They say Udaya Suryan. Karnanidhi is Sanskrit. The first Thirukural of the 1330 Thirukural couplets, the first Thirukural stands it, starts with Sanskrit. Ahara Madhala Yeruttallam Adi Bhavan which is a Sanskrit uh, the thing, the term. So, Nadraja, he is given both Sanskrit and Tamil for the Hindus here. Um, any questions from our viewers uh, pertaining to this temple, please? Mandar Karnik wants to know, where is the Chidambaram temple located and is it a Jyotir link? Um, Chidambaram temple is not a Jyotir link. Um, it is a temple where there is a Shivaling. He's called, the, the, the Murti is called Sri Molanada, but it's not a Jyotir link. The Chidambaram temple is located in Kadalo district of Tamil Nadu. It is, I, I can say it is um, about 220 kilometers from Chennai, south. So if you come to Tamil Nadu, the five, uh, four and a half hours or five hours drive from Ch Chennai will take you to Chidambaram. 
and, and viewers those roads are very well developed it's a it's a clean road you can take stops there are lots of good restaurants along the way uh, tamil nadu is a fairly well developed state i mean for those who may have not visited tamil nadu and and it's a, it's a really really a lot of fun doing this stuff i mean you you can you can fit your budget to travel in whichever way you want but the best way to do is get down in in chennai at the railway station or in the airport four five hours take a car like i said that belt from tanjavur to tiruchirappalli is a beautiful beautiful uh, you know every day you can go to one temple and spend some one day there and then from tiruchirappalli if you have the mood you can go another 100 kilometers and that's madurai <laughs> and another 100 kilometers that is rameshwaram so this is you know you can take a yatra and and you can absorb the the cultural heritage that has been there for thousands of years uh in my opinion tamil nadu is the only place in the entire world a state in the entire world which has more than 400 um sites of worship hindu sites of worship which are more than 1000 years old each of this temple is more than 1000 years old you won't have uh, such a um, number of ancient monuments or living monuments in any part of the world and chidambaram is a classic temple and so is tiruvannamalai and so is srirangam the huge campus srirangam and madurai amazing sculptures and the thanks to hrnc uh, an ancient mandam was was burned down in madurai recently in 2018 uh what chidambaram temple has been taken care in a pristine manner by the police dikshitas uh, next question please mandar karnik again i think too much ritualism has ruined sanatana for the lay person 20 centuries of same rituals will lead to ruination and superstition seeping in why do you say that uh, mandar your thoughts on this is an interesting thing that things don't change <laughs> therefore it becomes stale i don't know if i agree with that because sanskrit also hasn't changed things don't change that's why it is sanatan if it changes it won't be sanatan <laughs> sanatan means enduring next question so, please uh ramesh there are lots of comments i don't know if you are able to see there though that's why saying there's a bit of time to go through for question kumar raghupati wants to know since we have not explained the significance of our traditions and cultural values to the younger generation we are in this situation your thoughts sir true, true very true what um, mr kumar raghupati says is true we need to you know a generation ago we grew up you now parents grew up learning the basics of hinduism our parents our grandparents taught us ramayana mahabharata and other itihasas and core hindu values today the parents themselves do not have time they are both working and when they come back and each of them are either focused to their laptop or to their cell phones we must take care to explain the best values of hinduism to our children and if we don't give them the value education they are easy victims to the missionaries uh mal wants to know please mention the moolanadar lingam a swayambhu lingam which was seen in tillai vanam even before patanjali and vyagra pada came they do tapas to see the cosmic dance of shiva as nataraja Moolanadar yeah, Sri, Lingam. Yeah, Sri Moolanadar Lingam is a is a very very ancient uh, thing, and uh, the name itself signifies that. And uh, Chidambaram was a Tillai Vanam. That means uh, there's a tree called Tillai, which is now um, not present except in the mangroves, and um, that's why the name Tillai Vanam for Chidambaram Temple. It was a forest full of the trees and sage. Padanchali and Vyakarabada came there. We can go on the Chidambaram Temple and its traditions and its uh, antiquity and the special features. Um, sorry if I missed some some of them. Um, after all the questions, then I have one question. Uh, please remind me if I forget to ask you. Experiencer, 
Why is the Nataraja statue always depicted with such smooth feminine outlines? Why is it never depicted with male musculature? <laughs> See, the Nataraja the form, it comes over, I don't know, we, we cannot actually weigh in the antiquity thing. Third century, we have a representation of Nataraja, a wooden representation. The form has always been like this. It is as per Shilpa Sastra also in the, in the present form. We don't need a Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of a form. This is the form of Nataraja and this is how he will always be worshipped. And I don't think it is feminine. That's because he is uh, seen as a beautifully sculpted uh, sharp features. It doesn't mean it's a feminine form. It's a very masculine form, if you ask me. In fact, the uh, Nataraja, the two uh, meter big Nataraja uh, icon in, in CERN, Switzerland, is such a masculine uh, beauty. KRS wants to know, what's the next step in the fight? What will be the Dikshidas do if HR and CE persist for audit? See, the audit can be done, that is, uh, but not HRNC. An audit has to be done as per um, Section 266 explanation of the Income Tax Act, where any trust which gets more than 2 lakh rupees per annum has to be audited by a chartered accountant in a particular format. The teachers are ready for it. Already a chartered accountant is doing the audit. And the teachers are ready to publish those audited accounts also. HRNC coming in and doing audit is not only unwarranted, it is also not sanctioned by law. Because if the temple is controlled by HRNC, there should be an external audit, which the HRNC department is not following for the last 50 years. They have violated the law for the last 50 years and they're doing only an internal audit. And in the internal audit, there are more than 15 million, sorry, 1.5 million audit objections pending from 1986. Unresolved audit objections pending in the internal audit. So the audit by HRNC is a fraud on the law. The Dikshadas are ready for an uh, audit by a chartered accountant, which is already happening. Ramasubramanian wants to know, how has modern education helped or affected the Podu Dikshadars? Some of the Podu Dikshadars have modern uh, education, but they are still attached with the temple. Some of them have been professors and um, they go for teaching. But that is not appreciated by the rest of the Dikshadas. Dikshadas uh, always uh, associate themselves with the temple. Um, uh, certain uh, Dikshadas have tr training in law also in the previous generation. In the current generation, some of the Dikshadas want to get trained in law and administration, which is a welcome thing as long as they don't move away from the temple. Bapi Raju wants to know, what, where is the reference to this temple in Vedas? The Vedas do not refer to any temple at all. There is no reference to a temple in the Vedas. That's the truth. Uh, Murat Kudirai, if we have Supreme Court order in which HR and CE live into jumping into conclusions to take away, is it like pizza takeaway temples? I don't know what uh, he's trying to say. I totally understand the question. HRNC yeah. living to jumping into conclusions. No, no, HRNC wants to take over this temple, as I said, by hook and mostly by crook. And in violation of the Supreme Court order. They can try, but I think court will stop this. Ramani Kritivasan, why Adinams come in open support for this cause? Why I think they should Adinam, say do not come, come in. in. Yeah. Uh, for Chidam, the Chidamaram temple is the most important temple for Saivite Adinams. They come to worship here regularly. The Adinams have um, special endowments for this temple. They don't lack in coming and worshipping here. But in the current atmosphere, I think they will be hesitant to voice out their support. Maybe a little later they will come out in support of Chidamaram temple. Today, the DMK government is putting pressure on Adinams in direct and indirect manner. So, Adinams are a little watchful now. Uh, 
Arjun Shanai wants to know, can we send donations online? Online to Chidambaram Temple? I don't yeah. think that, uh, um, there's a facility for that yet. Uh, no. Jay, should the local support the Dikshidars? Is there a gap between the activities of temple and the impact on the local community? Why locals do not support anti-Hindu activities? Does not oppose, well, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, situation was like this uh, 10 years ago, but uh, it has improved a lot now. Not only the local support, but people across the Tamil, uh, Tamil Nadu come in, uh, in support of uh, Dikshidars. Recently, more than 1,500 people have, uh, persons have returned to the Tamil Nadu government HR and CE, condemning their operations, uh, covert operations in taking over the temple. And 5,000 Shiva Bhaktas came um, a month ago and voiced their support in, uh, in respect of the temple administration, the traditional administration. Things are slowly changing. We don't um, uh, uh, see Hindus coming out in support for the causes they should support. But slowly with the um, internet and the social media, things are changing. Krishna Balu Ayer, political talk. There are many mystic symbols around the temple complex. Yes, that is for you to come and find out with the uh, help of uh, Dikshadas and uh, appropriate Saivite uh, gurus. All right. I think that was the last question. Um, Ramesh ji, I have one last question before we conclude this program. And the question is like this. You know, studying in America, my kids were introduced to Hinduism using two pictures. Sir. One was of Nataraja dancing on a baby. That's how they described it. And the second <laughs> one was of Kali drinking blood. Now you mm. can understand how the children feel when they are told mm. that you are a Hindu. Now, mm. can you please explain to us what is the symbolism of Nataraja dancing on that dwarf? It's not a baby, but it's a dwarf from my understanding. But there is a symbolism associated with that. Can you please explain? Okay, it's not even dwarf or thing. He is a Rakshasa called Mailakan. He was out to destroy the world, but Nataraja put him there, made him, uh, you know, ensured that he does not move or get away. At the same time, he carries out his Panchakritya. So this Moyalakan in Saiva Siddhanta is known as Anava Malam, which destroys the soul. I mean, which binds the soul to destruction. Is controlled by Shiva. In Saiva Siddhanta, the philosophy is slightly different. In Ramayana, Lord Rama puts Ravana's life to end. Krishna puts the life of Kamsa to an end. But if you see in Shiva Puranas, the Tripura Shamharam of the three Rakshasas, they become the servitors of Shiva. Sura Badma, uh, his life is not ended by Lord Karthik, but he becomes the uh, peacock and the rooster. The rooster is in the flag of uh, Karthik and the peacock is the Vahana of Karthik. So the life is not put to an end, but it is kept under control. The Rakshasa or the evil force is kept under control by Nataraja. He is not dancing on a baby, he is dancing on a dancing on evil. So we have to give the correct description to our children, and that's why I say. Every parent has this responsibility. And the uh, uh, Christian missionaries are only happy to give the wrong picture to Hindu children. We must be wary of them. We must counter them. Uh, viewers, we, we have a link to the presentation on the YouTube description. You can uh, take it and you can look at it at your time. Uh, Ramesh ji, thank you so much, sir. This was a very timely Hello. talk that we had. And, and viewers, this was an article that Sri Ramesh ji wrote 11 years ago. 11 years ago. 
when I read that thing, I said, look, this is something that needs to be said again in the new form, which is video, where we can be a little bit more interactive and, and to adjust to the changing circumstances. Uh, Ramesh ji, in my opinion, one of the biggest flaws in this whole thing is the person who is representing the, the constituency of Chidambaram in the parliament. This person <laughs> has sworn that he is going to destroy Sanatana Dharma. And I hope the people of Chidambaram first remove this person in 2024. This is the big blot. If you can't get rid of that, then everything is going to still be the way it is. It's, it's just beyond words what I can say. Your thoughts, sir? For that, um, um, the person should be exposed for that. You know, he claims to be a Hindu, he claims to be a Dalit and uh, contest the election in a Dalit constituency. But we know him to be a crypto. So that needs to be exposed. And that will help not only defeat him, that will help in ensuring that he doesn't contest any elections anymore. So why can't somebody challenge his election even today if he's a crypto? I think, I think they're collecting proof. We will see some action soon. See, there's also some mischief going on, viewers, and uh, this is something that, again, happening in the shadows. Okay, this person is trying to also control a lot of church organizations in South India, and and this is a this is for all the real believers of Christianity. You are also under pressure from this. Please understand, there is a there is another big uh, conspiracy going on. Again, it will come to light in time. My point, again, I'm trying to say all these things. You are what you are. Why do you want to fake it? Why do you want to say a lie just to become a representative? And it is very unfortunate. The man won by a very, very tight majority, 2,000 votes or something like that. If we consider that there are 10 lakh plus voters, he, he won by a very, very small margin. Unfortunately, that is where things stand today. And, and viewers, those of you who want to spend time in India, please, please consider doing that route that I, I mentioned because... There's no other place you'll find so many temples with such rich history as Tamil Nadu. Thank you very much, Ramesh Ji. Namaskaram. And viewers, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. I'll, I'll come to you, sir. Uh, and also click on the bell button for notifications. One last word from you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I um, I grew up worshipping Nadraja in Chidambaram Temple. I grew up as a boy. I've seen Dikshidas doing pujas there. They are such an iconic symbol, the Pudududikshadas. They are part of the 2000 year plus um, Hindu traditions. We must ensure that such communities are protected by every one of us. Every one of our believing Hindus should protect such communities, wherever they are, in Chidambaram or any part of India. We must do an extra bit to ensure that these traditions are saved, nurtured, and continued. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, Ramesh ji. Viewers, again, spread, spread the word. Namaskaram. Namaskaram.